Well, I think that there are a number of things that healthcare uh, institutions and educational institutions can do to address healthcare disparities. So let's talk about educational institutions first. So I think educational institutions have to create um, the pipeline of healthcare workers that we need. So first, we need schools that aren't failing because you know the ability to go into healthcare uh, really depends upon having a foundation in science. And we know that, that many of our kids are not getting the kinds of foundations in science that they need to be prime for careers in healthcare. So that goes back to investing in our schools and improving education at the ground level. And that starts with pre-K, Head Start, elementary school, high school, and on up to, uh, to higher education. Then when we get into higher education, we have to make sure that we are encouraging those who may not consider careers in science or in healthcare, because they have never seen anyone who looks like them go into those fields. So we have to make sure we have people who are encouraging those who have the aptitude to do it but may not see themselves in those roles because they've never had a role model. Thirdly, I think that our institutions have to be making sure that they're evaluating candidates, particularly from medical school and nursing school, holistically, so we aren't excluding people who may have been disadvantaged and therefore may not have the best MCAT score or whatever the test that we're looking at, but could do the work with a little extra push. Because that's really what we, we want to achieve. We want to make sure that we aren't leaving anyone behind. And so I think we have to make sure that our educational institutions are doing what they can to make sure that they are creating a diverse healthcare workforce at the higher, level of, higher levels of, of education and that they are cooperating with and trying to help our primary and secondary schools by sending resources, sending some of their own medical students who may be great mentors or tutors or some of their graduate students into those you know, uh, primary and secondary schools to act as role models, to act as tutors, to show those kids who may, not, may never have seen a person of color who's been a doctor or a scientist or a nurse, that that role modeling can be really critical. So I think there are things that our educational institutions can do at all levels, but for our primary and secondary schools, it's really incumbent upon government to make sure that those schools are adequately funded. For our healthcare institutions, our healthcare institutions are full of bright minds we have some of the, the best physicians and scientists and nurses and social workers and technicians. What are we doing to partner with our communities? What are we doing to go into the schools and encourage those kids who may not have, again, any role models of people of color who have achieved actually quite a lot in science or in medicine and act as a role model, or again, maybe as a tutor. We're doing better with girls than we are with boys. And we know that actually, if you look at the number of black men who are enrolling in medical school, we actually were doing better in the 1970s and 80s than we are now. And so really going into the schools sending role models and targeting those boys and trying to encourage them and make sure that they see people who look like them in roles of science and roles of medicine so that they may think that they can achieve those same things. I think there are a lot of things that our healthcare organizations can do that don't cost a lot of money but could potentially provide a big boost 
to the primary and secondary schools that surround them in the community.